climate is changing, and there's more and more extreme events happened these days, such as the 2013 Alberta flooding, uh, 2015 Saskatchewan drought. Our research can help to uh, understand this, uh, this phenomena and help to expand that and see what we can do to mitigate the impact of the changing climate on what resources and the management. Here at the Global Institute for Water Security, we're using weather research and the forecast model to study the present and the future climate conditions of Western Canada. The atmospheric model is able to simulate when cloud formations and precipitation is going to happen. And the atmospheric model is also able to simulate hurricanes, extropical cyclones, and uh, tornadoes. So what I showed here is the Wolf simulated uh, June 2013 Alberta flooding events. This is the heavy rainfall triggered catastrophic flooding, which is described as worst over Alberta's history. And the total economic damage is more than one billion. We use WOLF to reconstruct the three-dimensional thermodynamic field of, of the atmospheric condition before and during the flood. This is a 3D animation of the flooding events. And the white path you see is the cloud formed, and the light blue on the ground is the accumulated rainfall. These models can be used to understand the current climate and to predict the future climate conditions. With more and more data available, we will be able to understand better the hydrometeorological condition of Saskatchewan River Basin and how it's going to evolve on the global change background. We also apply our methodology to other places around the world. We have conducted field campaign collaborating with a group from University of Chile. For that, we studied the severe convective events happened during the two-week period. In my research, I'm uh, understanding the convective storms on the lee side of the Rocky Mountains. Uh, and those are storms are a source of water for the hydrological um, system, uh, as well as a source of catastrophic events. One very important step of our research is to make good measurements so for that, we prepare uh, field campaigns and collaborate also with other groups. We measure at the surface temperature, wind speed, pressure, uh, rain. We also launch balloons with a small box that contains sensors to measure temperature, wind speed, uh, relative humidity, pressure. So with that, we can have a deep profile of all the atmospheric variables that we are interested on, and then integrate that information to models or any analysis. A field campaign has a very complex organization. First thing is to prepare and choose the site, then think about what you're going to measure and how you're going to do that. So choose the instrument, what time scale you want to, to do that, and in case of extreme events or storms, you need to guess when it's going to happen and then try to catch that. I am trying to uh, project the future climate which is from 2075 to uh, 2099 and I am using very high resolution uh, model because most of the climate model they do not resolve very important atmospheric uh, processes like convection, thunderstorms and uh, other important processes. We are focusing the Western Canada and no one has done this kind of study before. So if I successfully uh, run all the model for the Western Canada, then we will be able to resolve what are the different atmospheric processes are happening uh, in Saskatoon River Basin and the Mackenzie River Basin. The output of the model can be uh, used by the hydrological modeling to uh, do the future climate scenario so that uh, policy makers or uh, uh, stakeholders or the people who are into like infrastructure development, they can use the data and then they can plan the future. Society today has a pressing need to understand the regional implication of global climate change in many ways 
this is one of the greatest scientific and practical problems of our time and is needed for making important decisions related to natural resources, adaptation, and the environmental vulnerability.